So let's go back in time to the, to the beginning of MakerBot. Zach and Adam and I were messing around with 3D printers. We were working on the RepRap project, and we'd gotten one to work for a few minutes before it let out the magic smoke and, and broke again. And finally we were like, okay, we can do this. Let's quit our jobs. Let's start a robot company. We were sitting around trying to figure out what we should name our company, and we were like, okay, we're going to make robots that make things. So we're going to make making robots. What should we call it? And then we were like, well, we should call maybe what about MakerBot? And we were like, that's such a good name. There's just no way that that is available. And we checked, and we were like, oh, we can get it. Great, go. And so we were off to the races. We had recently started NYC Resistor as a hacker space, and we just camped out. We literally got two cases of ramen, and we started drinking caffeine and staying up late and prototyping. Right now, what's happening as we are talking to you, our first generation MakerBot, the first MakerBot to ever spit anything out, is currently spitting something out. I think it was done at like 8 a.m. and I had a flight at 10 a.m. to South by Southwest. So we chucked it in a Pelican case and I went to South by Southwest and just went to bars with the MakerBot and started printing out shot glasses and that's how we launched MakerBot. Then we put it up in the store. People could buy them and the first 20 we put together in boxes and we thought they would take two months to sell out. And instead they took two weeks. And we were like, okay, here we go. At that time we were looking at every sandwich as if it was more robot parts. We'd be like, we could order more robot parts if we, weren't, if we didn't have to eat. Really for the next nine months after coming up with the cupcake, our first model, we just packed and shipped. We started out in uh, Jake Lodwick's office. He gave us a corner. And within three or four months, we had taken over the whole office. And he was like, my lease is up. I'm letting go of this place. And we were like, OK, we have to find a real, a real space to do this. OK, so we are on 3rd and Bergen. And then we've got a really straightforward door here. We called them up. We moved in. And we were like, 5,000 square feet. This is going to take us years to fill up. And then like two months later, it was full. Um, we hired a, a, an employee, that was kind of a big deal. And three years later, we're like, we're 85 people, which just boggles my mind. When we started, it was kind of like, one person can do anything with this. And it's true. And now we're at a point where it's like, one person can do anything with this. What happens now that we're 10,000? How do we change the world together?